Hi everyone, it's Michael. I'm sorry I've been looking so schlubby lately, but I have been coming back from yoga and just shooting these videos immediately, so um, thank you for allowing me to just exist comfortably. Um, so I'm going to continue the series of pH, TDS, and water types. Um, and today's video is on TDS, and I have to be honest, I'm a little anxious about it. The information is complex, um, it's a little overwhelming, so I'm gonna take it um, as slowly and concisely as possible. Um, I'm going to lean heavily on my notes, I hope that's okay. But let's just go ahead and jump in. TDS means total dissolved solids, but it can also refer to total dissolved sodium. And that's a very integral distinction because I was so confused when I started looking at all this information on my own because I would think to myself, well, why is, why is one resource recommending 500 and one resource is recommending 120? I just didn't understand what the distinction was, but um, sodium is a portion of your total dissolved solids, but sodium constitutes only a portion of it. So those numbers will be different. So just make sure you're looking for that distinction when you're reading literature on the matter. Um, so total dissolved solids is a measurement that is expressed in ppm or parts per million. So given that this knowledge is building on our discussion of pH, the objective is relatively the same. We want to provide our orchids with the same general quality of water that they would be receiving in the wild. So that being said, rainwater typically has a very low TDS, um, something to the tune of like 10 to 20. Um, so as it pertains to semi-hydroponics, we're actually pursuing a TDS of 125 ppm, specifically referring to nitrogen. So 20% of nitrogen is salts. So that's just something to keep in the back of your mind, especially as you look at literature that makes the distinction between sodium and solids. Um, so the real trick here is to distinguish which solids are um, escalating your reading and what's, what's turning up in that reading, because it isn't just reading nitrogen. For example, if somebody asks you how hard your water is, Larry Jones, I'm thinking of you, um, they're asking you how much calcium and magnesium carbonates are present in your water. So the hardness of water is also, or it can also be measured in ppm. So if it's under 17 ppm, your water is considered soft. If your water is at a ppm of 17.1 to 60, it's considered slightly hard. If your water is at 60 to 120, it's considered moderately hard. And if it's at 120 to 180, it's considered hard. So that's kind of the gradient scale. But it also demonstrates the fact that there's plenty of other things that are present in the water other than sodium or nitrogen. So again, it's tricky to know what your TDS actually is because it's not reading just nitrogen or just calcium or just magnesium. So the way that a TDS meter works is it actually measures the conductivity of the substance of the water. So pure water is generally a very poor conductor and therefore it has a very low TDS. But it's the minerals, the salts, the metals that are dissolved in a given volume of water that act as charged ions and they therefore give it a higher conductivity. So it's actually measuring how conductive the water is. So the presence of other minerals really complicates your ability to assess the content of your water. If you're aiming for a total PPM, as Ray Barkalow would recommend, he tells you to aim for um, a total PPM of nitrogen of 125. Um, but let's think about the breakdown of our fertilizer. If your fertilizer is 20% nitrogen, then your TDS may need to read 600 in order for you to be hitting that 125 in nitrogen, Does, if that makes sense. So. You know, I think in general, the takeaway here is that the higher the TDS, the worse the quality of the water. Um, but you know what, That's let's do it just like we did last time. Um, I invested in a little TDS meter, but let's get this research on its feet, let's get up. We're gonna test a bunch of different substances. So first we're gonna test my tap water, then we're gonna test my Brita filtered water, then we're gonna test <laughs> distilled water, and then we're gonna test my Brita water fertilized, then we're gonna test the distilled water fertilized, and then we're gonna test the water that's a runoff from a semi-hydroponic container. So you, that's also going to give you a snapshot of what has been happening in your containers and how much salt buildup or mineral buildup there is in those containers. And this is the first time I've done this. This is, I just got this meter. Of course, I will link the product below. Um, so this is gonna be the first time I'm seeing this information just like you. So I may, may need to make some really significant changes, or maybe I'm doing just what I need to do. But either way, let's get up and take a look.
So from left to right, what you're looking at is a cup of tap water, a cup of Brita filtered water, a cup of purchased distilled water. The big jar on the left is that same Brita filtered water, but fertilized. The big jar on the right is that same purchased distilled water, but fertilized. And the empty jar on the right, I'm actually going to fill with runoff from that frag, so we can kind of assess exactly what's been happening in that container. So just to give you a quick snapshot of my tool, this is the TDS uh, meter I purchased off of Amazon. And something to be aware of, uh, Ray Barkalow, the pioneer of semi-hydroponics, says to be kind of leery of these. They tend to be finicky, so um, he uses two. So I actually might invest in getting another one to kind of cross-reference and make sure that I'm getting the same readings. So let's go ahead and just jump in. And you turn it on. It's going to register a PPM of zero. If I bring it in closer, you can see that's the measuring unit. So let's start with this guy. So my tap water is coming up with a reading of one, wow, 170. So that, according to the hardness scale, makes my water pretty hard. So I'm gonna go ahead and shake this off. Oh, I forgot to grab a towel. Just dry it on my pants. Classy. Um, all right, so then the meter goes back to zero. So now let's check the Brita purified water. This is giving me a reading of 153. Okay, so it's a little better, but still hard water. So now let's go ahead and check the distilled water. Make sure it goes back to zero. Wow, that's crazy. The distilled water is registering as zero, absolute zero, which is really, really cool and great news. So this will be really informative. Um, so you can see on the top here, I've actually indicated that this is my regular uh, water that is fertilized. And then on this one here, I have distilled. So I wanna make sure I keep these straight. But now let's see how much of an impact that actually makes. Oh, this is so cool, guys. I'm getting really excited because I actually understand what's going on. <laughs> so this is giving me an overall reading of 336. Okay, so 336 total dissolved solids. Shake it off, and now let's go for the distilled. All right, and we are back to zero. Nice, this is giving me a reading of 180. So it's hard to assess what the definitive rule is, but what I'm hearing from a lot of orchid growers is that between 150 to 200 is kind of the sweet spot. So I don't know if that's true, but I think I'm actually going to move forward with just trying to um, flush my systems with distilled water and fertilize with this um, distilled water with fertilizer solution because I think it may actually have a really strong impact on the plants. I just didn't realize how different the water was. Um, so now let's get to the really interesting part. Let's see what's been going on inside of this container for my poor little frag that's struggling. I'm gonna go ahead and pour him in here. Stay in there, buddy. Okay. So grab the TDS. I'm nervous, let's see. Huh. It's actually giving me a reading, I don't know if you guys can see it. Here, I'll bring it up to you. It's giving me a reading of around 312, which is kind of peculiar, I guess. I would have. I was just expecting it to have been a lot higher considering that I've been fertilizing with just regular tap water up until this point. So there we go. So just like monitoring pH, monitoring TDS is not the most exciting endeavor, but it is really, really telling. And there are certain species of orchids that are exceptionally sensitive to it. So everyone always says paths and frags are very difficult plants because they really are sensitive to mineral content and that always sounded like nothing to me like i just didn't understand what that meant when people would say it to me so you just nod affirmatively but look at my frag right now i've been struggling with it because i was doing such a good job for a little while but then it started to turn brown here and it started to turn brown here and it started to turn brown on the tips here and i just couldn't figure out what was going on but this is what people have been talking about TDS really does have a tangible impact on your plants, and some more than others. So when you're looking at the culture sheets for each of these things, pay attention to those nuances, because 
it may be the difference of you having a beautiful flowering healthy frag or having this. So I guess that's pretty much it. Um, I'm going to wrap up this series with discussing the different types of water and hopefully that'll give you a really clear snapshot all together of how to move forward with monitoring your water, your water quality, um, and exactly what you're providing to your orchids. So um, thank you guys so much for being patient with um, a really heady topic. Um, thank you for spending your time with me and tuning in. If you have any questions, concerns, anything you want to add, please go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. I, as always, encourage you to like, comment, subscribe, and have a beautiful rest of your day. Happy growing, guys. Bye.